Welcome back. Our next guest is here to share tips on how to prepare for the coming age revolution and set yourself up for a longer, better life. His new book is titled The Great Age Reboot, Cracking the Longevity Code for a Younger Tomorrow. Please welcome New York Times bestselling author, Dr. Michael Roizen. Good morning, Dr. Roizen. How are you? I am great. How are you? I'm doing great. I'm so looking forward to this. I'm super excited to talk about it's time for a reboot. Isn't it really time for a great reboot, you guys? <laughs> well, it is time for a reboot. And the great news is we're going to get one with at least an 80% probability. Yes. And by the way, congratulations on your new book, my friend. I'm so excited to talk about this. We have it on our set this morning. A big, thick book. Oh, my goodness. Everyone's going to learn so much information out of it. So in a nutshell, what are some of the newest scientific breakthroughs and discoveries that will enable us to live longer? Because I think we're all trying to find ways to live a long, healthy lifestyle. Well, you're going to live longer and younger meaning in 1998 I predicted in the real age books that 60 would be the new 40. That's come to pass. We now think that with a 80% probability, 90 will be the new 40. So wow. life expectancy in the United States has increased about two and a half years every 10 years since 1890, from about an age of 41 and 19 in 1890 to about 78 now. But in the next 10 years, we expect it to go up by 30 years, but these will be healthy years, so that 90 will be the new 40. And that's due to, as you said, there are 14 areas of research into the basic mechanism of aging. Mm -hmm. And each one of those has shown in at least two animal species to be able to reboot you back. Let me give you an example. Uh -huh. Simple plasma donation. You donate your plasma, and what that forces your body to do is to make new proteins and new plasma. And what that does in animal studies makes your muscles younger, makes your cardiovascular system younger, your pancreas younger, your liver younger, all of you uh -huh. younger, even your bones. Now it's been done in the first of the human trials called AMBAR for people with Alzheimer's disease. Mm -hmm. And in early Alzheimer's, donating plasma once a week for four, five weeks, and then once a month for the next four months, nine donations over a five month period, over 15 months, it reversed early Alzheimer's, every one of the brain functioning domains, cognitive domains we call them, oh, wow. got reversed not just slowed down, but reversed. So this is the first randomized controlled trial in humans, uh -huh. but it's just one of the studies. Um, and there are many more. So sometime in the future, you'll go in a car wash, um, if you will, maybe at 2050, at 90 and come out 40. But for the next oh. 10 years, we expect it to be organ by organ, which is why it's so important for you to keep every one of your organs as young as possible now. That is really helpful information because my grandma, she ha she's battling Alzheimer's and dementia. And boy, if I knew about that before now, maybe we could have did something to slow it down or stop it, you know? So that, that was really helpful information to our audience watching this morning. But now, Dr. Royzen, what do you mean when you say living longer will also mean living younger? Well. That's just it. It Instead of you being 90 and acting 90 or 100 yeah. or 110 and just, if you will, not knowing the difference between, if you will, what you're eating and what you're not eating, mm -hmm. when you're 90, you're going to be functioning as if you're 40. That is, every one of your organ systems will be, just like in the plasma donation, your muscles will be those muscles of a 40 year old, not of a 90 year old. And so there are many things you can do. And that's what we go into the book in the book, not only the 14 areas of science that show what you can do, such as genetic engineering. And let me give you an, an, a specific example when I get sure. to the brain. But those things you can do specifically for your brain or for your joints or for your heart. 
So in the brain, there are, and we think the brain is the most important because it's the toughest to reboot. Yeah. But there are 33 things you can do now. And if it's a grandma, maybe, um, Noah, you'll try some of these yourself. But there are things you can do now. 33 things we go into in the book that have been shown in at least two studies to reboot or to slow brain aging. Let me give you one. So okay. we know that you're a genetic engineer. When you do activities, you turn on genes or turn off genes, and all genes are as protein factories. So, for example, when you do vigorous physical activity, just even walking fast or gardening in a way that stresses your muscle, whatever it is you like to do with physical activity, what happens is you turn on a gene in that muscle that produces small protein called arisen. It gets the blood brain, go to the brain, and it produces brain-derived neurotrophic growth factor, which mm -hmm. increases the size of your memory center, mm -hmm. meaning it's much less likely for you to get cognitive dysfunction or dementia as you get older. Why did that happen? Because you're a genetic engineer. That's one of the things we've yeah. learned with the Human Genome Project. You control over 80% of those genes. Another thing you can do, so that's speed of muscle, speed of processing games, doing um, crossword puzzles or doing executive function memory games, etc. Mm -hmm. Those make a little difference. But the real difference is when you have to do games in a quick fashion and yeah. stress your brain. That actually improves your memory function, decreases dementia over 48% if you just do 18 hours of it over a 10-year period. Amazing benefit. Coffee, if you have, if you will, um, if you're a fast metabolizer of coffee and you don't get headaches or gastric upset or anxiety or heart arrhythmias from it, if you have more than four cups, that slows it. So does a tablespoon and a half of olive oil. So does an ounce of blueberries a day. So there are a lot of things that are easy, even smelling four different smells. So smell garlic and coffee and onions and, and one other smell, rosemary, whatever you like to smell. But smelling four different smells a day also decreases your risk of dementia as you get older. So there are 33 things that have been shown in multiple studies and many others for each organ. Another one, one of the supplements uh -huh. Carnitine, it's a muscle building supplement that kids use to become like Arnold Schwarzenegger was. You build up muscles, but it helps prevent muscle loss in the elderly and us who are older. But it also, in randomized controlled studies, two of them, uh -huh. shows that it, it decreases functional brain loss as we, so it increases brain functioning as we get older. Simple things like that. Dr. Voisin, you are such a gift. Oh my goodness, where have you been all my life, my friend? <laughs> I, I, I needed you so long ago. <laughs> but lastly, before we have to go, what advice can you share on how to not only endure but thrive in the golden years and beyond? Like, how do you get your patients to change behavior and plan for this? Like, how can we implement these easily? Well, the key is actually getting a buddy and actually um, we have a buddy match at our, I mean, one of the most important things is your posse and one of the greatest agers, if will, you will, is loneliness. So on our website at greatagereboot.com, we have a, an app that actually helps you with buddy match. But get a buddy and decide something you guys or ladies want to do together. Mm -hmm. And your buddy can be your spouse, but often is a friend, whether it's walking or gardening or playing ping pong or just talking about something, or playing speed of processing games together, or just enjoying a cup of coffee together. Whatever it is, being having six friends a month, and then having a purpose. Um, and there is social prescribing. Again, one of those things where you find something you love to do and that loves you back. Pick a job like that. But it is having a posse is the most important thing. And then starting with a plan. So get a plan. You can get one on our, our website, greatagereboot.com, or there's some workbook areas in the book that you can choose to do and figure out the plan for yourself so that you can choose what you want to do. The key is you want to do things that you love and that love you back.
So you may love French fries, but they're trying to kill you. You wouldn't marry someone that's who's right. trying to kill you every day. You shouldn't eat food that's trying to kill you every day. On the other hand, you may love salmon or you may love avocados, and those foods you'll love you back. That's what you want to do. You may not like walking, but you may love ping pong or you may love pat paddle ball. Find things you love that love you back, and that's the key. This is sunshine, not castor oil. Wow, Dr. Michael Royzen, thank you so much for a wonderful conversation. What a terrific chat. I hope so many watching learned more about all these important topics that we discussed this morning. Be sure to go pick up a copy of his new book. It's now available in bookstores where books are sold. Dr. Michael Royzen, you take care. You have a great day, and we will be right back in a moment. Thank you, Noah.